Commissioner Ileana Olguin unveiled a Deputy Peter J. Herrera memorial sign Wednesday. The Sheriff's Office personnel, Deputy Herrera's wife, family and friends were present to witness the sign's unveiling. The unveiling took place on the second anniversary of the passing of Deputy Herrera. The memorial sign is located at the corner of Chicken Ranch and FM 258. Well, we're going to continue to see some pretty nice conditions for today. Here's a live look outside from our plaza camera in downtown El Paso. You can see the sun slowly starting to come up. And with that being said, we're looking at some pretty breezy conditions in some areas. 13 miles per hour in Cloudcroft, 14 El Paso, 10 in Juarez and, Ju and in Las Cruces, excuse me, Deming, as well as Silver City. As for those temperatures right now, 40 degrees in Deming, 54 El Paso, 41 in Las Cruces. Cruises. Now we are expecting to see a pretty clear day across the area and with that being said clear skies usually means that we're going to be warming up right well we're going to be much closer to normal today than we have been the last few days so with that being said here's a look at your borderland high 72 degrees in El Paso 69 Las Cruces 67 in Deming and 71 in Juarez as for those near normal temperatures well that's mainly because we've got below average temperatures up north we got some warmer temperatures down towards the southeast. And you know what? Clear conditions are going to continue to make us at least uh, warmer right where we need to be. We should be around 72 to 73 degrees for this time of year in the borderland area. And that's what we're going to be seeing. 77 degrees in Fort Hancock, 72 in Del City and Sierra Blanca, 74 Socorro. 72 again in El Paso, 71 in Vado, 61 in Hatch, and 67 in Deming. But it is going to be a chilly morning, so as you get ready for today, just want to make sure that you're bundled up. But in layers, because we are going to continue to warm up into the rest of today. And wind speeds should start to pick up in those later afternoon hours. With that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at your El Paso under Gulf Index for today. That is at an 8, as we're expecting to see breezy, but but nice temperatures. Thank you, Selena. It is 636. Taking a look at the latest COVID-19 data for El Paso County. Just coming into our newsroom, the Department of Public Health reporting four new COVID-related deaths today. A total number of deaths now at 2,360. Health officials also reporting 150 new cases. The active cases just above 2,200. Data also showing more than 124,000 individuals have recovered from the virus and the recovery rate is still at 96%. And a family dispute leading to a stabbing in El Paso's Lower Valley, according to El Paso Police Department. Investigators say that this happened just before 7 on Thursday morning at the home on Padilla Drive near Yasleta Park. Investigators say a 33-year-old man was taken to the hospital and say the victim's uncle was taken into custody. Police have not provided yet the condition on the victim. Now moving across New Mexico now, a man in Las Cruces is recovering from a cement truck that rolled over. The incident happened early on Thursday morning near Sageway and Sage Springs Drive. Las Cruces firefighters and an American medical response crew tended to the driver. He was transported to Mountain View Regional Medical Center. Police say his injuries are not believed to be life-threatening. To an update now to that plane crash that happened near Lawrenceburg in New Mexico. Border Patrol providing us with video. Border Patrol says this happened Wednesday at 1.45 in the morning. The Lawrenceburg Border Patrol was requested by New Mexico State Police in the search and rescue of the downed aircraft. Border Patrol says agents were able to locate the pilot and passenger and then provided aid to the victims and carried them off the mountain. Both people were taken to a local hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. El Paso Sector Chief Gloria Chavez saying if it was not for the efforts of the Lordsburg agents, the two victims could have died in the aftermath of that crash. According to the Border Patrol, both were off-duty police officers with the full Shear Police Department. The president of Mexico will be making a stop in Juanes today to talk about the COVID-19 situation. President Andres Manuel López Obrador is also expected to discuss the situation at the border. The governor of Chihuahua will be joining Obrador during his one-day visit. He plans on asking López Obrador for additional COVID-19 vaccines.
It's 639. Governor Greg Abbott gave an update on Thursday on his Save Our Seniors program. Abbott announced the initiative at a news conference in Corpus Christi last month. The program began giving COVID-19 vaccinations in rural areas in the state to homebound individuals, but is now reaching out to more populated counties to increase vaccination efforts. We're beginning to see a decrease in demand for vaccinations. We're, we're having about half or even less than half of the people who signed up for a vaccine actually show up to get a vaccine. And so we're not concerned about people getting in line, not being able to get a vaccine shot. We're more concerned and focused on making sure we get more people out to get a vaccine shot. But at the same time, making sure that if you're age 80 or older, you will get to go to the front of the line. The program will be working with the state of Texas, Texas Health and Human Services Commission, and other local entities. And one of the most watched bills this session moves to the first stage of the Texas Capitol. George Floyd's friends, community activists, and lawmakers testified in support of the George Floyd Act. The bill, followed by House Democrats, would implement police reform across the state. The Combined Law Enforcement Associations of Texas also testified against the bill Thursday and criticized the fact that it includes no training requirements for officers to enact change. A procedural gaffe forced an abrupt end to a Texas House hearing on a Republican-backed voting restrictions bill. The move has temporarily deprived more than 100 people of the chance to testify about it, including former El Paso Congressman Beth O'Rourke. A sweeping bill would impose new limits on mail-in voting and grant more power to partisan poll watchers. O'Rourke explained to our sister station KXAN in Austin why he's against the bill. Chris Holland, with whom I was just speaking, who is the elections administrator in Harris County, who implemented 24-hour voting for shift workers who might get off at 2 a.m. or 4 a.m. and still want to vote, uh, voting super centers, drive-through voting. These kinds of, of innovations would effectively no longer be allowed. Texas Republicans say the bill is to help protect voter integrity. However, critics say it's voter suppression and say there has been no evidence of widespread voter fraud in Texas. It is 641. Coming up, a giant container ship remains stuck inside an Egypt canal. How authorities are racing to free it. You're watching KTSM 9 News today. The Golf Index is sponsored by El Paso Honda.